then uh, welcome to the first lab, which is uh, Rapid Prototyping 1, the lab on uh, design. In this lab, we will go over uh, computer-aided design and make the design for our chip, which will be 3D printed and tested later. So in this lab, uh, you will learn about uh, the use of CAD software, uh, prototype design in CAD, and uh, preparing a prototype for 3D printing. And I recommend you to have the lab instructions open next to you or on your computer next to the screen that you will be working in. Um, I will be recording the steps that I take in, uh, in AutoCAD Inventor. Uh, for this lab, you need to install AutoCAD Inventor on your computer. As a student, you can register for uh, a free educational license and you can install the latest version. Since we use uh, file exchange formats uh, that are commonly used like uh, STP and STL, it doesn't matter what version of the software you use. And um, first thing is if you go to section 2.2 in the instructions, there is um, a technical drawing for the chip that you're going to make. And what we do first is um, we design the version without the micropillars together. If you are an expert in uh, design or you want to use another uh, CAD software, feel free to do so. Uh, we are going to teach you the skills, the basic skills to use uh, Autodesk Inventor. And um, if it is the first time you use this software, I really recommend looking at the tutorials uh, before you start the exercise. You can do this by uh, going on the, the toolbar to the tutorial gallery and uh, start by the, the basic part modeling. Now I will start the, the design. So we are at uh, section 2.3.1 and first thing is to open a new file and because the default for Inventor is um, Imperial Units, you must select under the templates the metric standard millimeter template and create a new file. And I'm looking at the instruction because I want to do it the same way you do it. I could do it much faster, but uh, this is the way to, to go through the tutorial. So. First, you need to start with a 2D sketch and you can select any plane that you like. And you need to create the outline of the chip, which is 25 millimeters by 75 millimeters. This is the standard microscope slide that I have referred to so many times in the lectures. So this is what we stick with. And now you have the outline of your chip. It is uh, a rectangle that uses a center point and the two dimensions for the two sides that you have defined. You can finish the sketch. And now you need to extrude. So, so far this has been 2D CAD. Now we make it 3D by extruding. And chip thickness is 1.5 millimeters. So you need to extrude by 1.5. Now you have a brick, which is the body of the chip. And the instructions recommend you to save your work after every step. It's a good idea because, uh, well, there is a likelihood that uh, the program might crash after certain steps, so it's a good idea to save. I will change the file name later and I'm saving in a temporary location. So yeah, you can 
drag around the part like I do by holding down the shift and the middle mouse button. This is a useful function. You don't need any fancy uh, extra gear to rotate the part. You just need a decent mouse. Now you need to make another 2D sketch on one of the uh, flat sides. And we draw the ports. So take the circle tool and uh, make a two millimeter circle. This is the side of the port or size of the port. And click the dimension tool to align the port. Now, um, so from both uh, edges, make it six and a half. And the next thing is to draw the inside. And let's see how I'm trying to do it the same way as in the instructions, not to confuse you too much. Normally I would just copy them or mirror them. So draw all the other four inlets the same way as you have done with this one. And notice that uh, as I drag the center point to the other side, you see a line. This means that my center point is right now aligned on the line, uh, on the same line as the other one. And if I draw the other two circles, then their centers will remain aligned. Nevertheless, to make sure, I will also add the dimensions and same on the other side. You can use these helper lines, they can make your life easier. But it's best to have all the dimensions defined. And I have the dimension tool active. I can keep defining dimensions all I want. So, now we have all the all the inlets defined. Now let's work on the reactor. That's the next thing. So we're going to make a micro reactor in the middle. Five millimeters by 20 millimeters is what's defined in the instructions. And uh, now you need to design the connection to the ports. So as I have done, select the line tool and connect the corners to the center points of your uh, inlet features. And for the micro reactor, as you saw, I also used uh, the two point center rectangle to make that. So this is normally how I do it uh, for, for my chips. I use these as guidance features and it's even possible to mark them as construction lines which means that later they do not contribute to the 3D design. They are just there to help you. Uh, okay, now I see. So what we do is uh, now draw the channels and I 
thought about another method. The other method to do it would be to draw the center line. I'm also going to show that. That's how I normally do it. If you draw the center line like this and then turn off the construction feature and then find the midpoint then with the three-point rectangle tool you can draw a channel and use the line as the guide so that's uh, now I can delete these construction lines they are not needed anymore so the other way uh, and you can keep this in mind as a thing for later you can draw a, a line to guide your channel and then you can use the three-point center rectangle tool to make your channel and in this way you can draw channels in any orientation and you only need to define the width but uh, in this H micro reactor we go all the way from the port to the reactor connecting the midpoint of the reactor to the to the port uh, However, this is not aligned correctly, I think. And be careful that the uh, construction feature is turned off otherwise your lines may not be selectable later and notice that when I connect to the curvature then this uh, tangent alignment appears and that's what I do that's how I connect to the curve and initially I did it wrong so make sure that you also do it this way that the tangential alignment is selected just like that this one I think was correct but let's make sure anyway there so now this part is done now we can extrude again and save your work just to be safe now we start on the inlets so select the larger circles and reverse the direction and make sure that you have extrusion selected and not uh, cutting and then we need the ports to be five millimeters high that means uh, you need to add the thickness of the chip so altogether it's 6.5 millimeters So now we have the outline for that and we need to make sure that we can reuse the same sketch. So right click on the sketch and select share sketch. Now it's uh, visible again and I can use it again. Now we make the holes. And this time you need to cut. And you can use the through all function which will go through all the layers in your model. In uh, AutoCAD Inventor 2022 it also shows the distance that uh, this means.
Now we will do some filleting. This just makes sure that uh, there is a stronger connection between the body of the chip and the ports. When we 3D print, this is important. Now save again. And now we create the channels and the micro reactor. So extrude again. Select the whole geometry. Minus, of course, the body of the chip, because we are not going to cut that. And the depth of the micro reactor will be 0.3 millimeters, so 300 microns. That's what I do now. By the way, if you enter microns as the unit, then the software will do the conversion. You can also do conversion between imperial and metric if that's what you would like to do, but um, it's best to work in metric. So, now this is done. And this is the base of your chip. So it is the chip without the micro pillars now. And one thing left to do to make it look exactly like uh, like the example chips is to fillet the sides to make them rounded. So we will select a 2 millimeter fillet and round down the sides of the chip. And that's it. So this is the first part. And I will turn off the visibility of the sketch so you can see the completed design without the micro pillar. So this is just an H micro reactor and we could already um, make it printable like this. So next thing we do is uh, we place the micro pillars. And we start the sketch inside the micro reactor, just like this. And I will do something that is not in the instructions. This project geometry tool can get the geometry from another sketch, which is pretty useful. So now we get the corner points of our reactor and use it to draw a rectangle. Now to make the micro pillars. Okay, one error that I made was placing this in the middle. So, first circle according to the instructions has to be like this. And then next one also 0.4 millimeters. Okay, I think I will deviate from the instructions here. Instead of what's written in the instruction, I'm just going to use the rectangular pattern tool. Make five circles with 
Yeah, this looks good. So, point 0.8 between the two rows and, uh, and one millimeter between these five. Let's see if we meet our constraints. No, not really. Let's try again. Yeah, didn't position the first circle. This should be fine now. And now we make a pattern. Then we make it in the other direction. So you notice that I have more than I will actually need. That means during the extrusion I will not select all of them. Go in the top view and just drag a selection box. If you want to add more, press shift and then hold shift and then unselect the big rectangle of the reactor. And there it is. We have the pattern similar to how it needs to be in the end. And now we save. Now you add your name. So select the sketch again, go to the top and uh, choose text. Type your initials and the date. And it's not rotated the right way, so let's rotate it. You can select any point at random, then just drag it to the right place. And I like to dimension even the writing, just select the bounding box and uh, attach a dimension and then it will be aligned properly to where you want it to be. Now it can be extruded into the chip. So this is how you can do engraving. And make sure to select cut. And half a millimeter is uh, quite visible. Also, you can go with the default uh, sizes uh, set up for the inscription. And then there you have it. Now, so I have already filleted the corners, but uh, in the instructions it would have come just now. But this is the completed chip with the micropillars inside. 
and uh, now we need to add the support for 3d printing normally how I do it is uh, I use a work plane so in work features plane offset from plane you select the plane that you want to use so you create the work plane which is uh, one centimeter off from this side and you can use it to make another sketch click, click sketch and then click the work plane and then you can add uh, the footprint and I am deviating from the instructions again a little bit So this will be our footprint. It can actually be any thickness, it doesn't matter. This is what will connect uh, to the printing platform. And now we draw the supports themselves. I again use project geometry to make my life easier. Now you see there's the projection of the chip on this uh, work plane and I can draw my support pillars and we make a rectangular pattern with 1.5 pitch distance uh, and however many pieces are needed to fill it up okay let's let's use a bit larger pitch yeah and just like before extrude and select as many pillars as are needed so to add and remove to the selection uh, press shift while you click and the next thing I do is uh, I click this two however that doesn't give me the result I actually want so I will go with two next which will uh, extrude between the starting face and the face that is adjacent to it so you see the pillar is fully drawn however it's not correct on this side so I will have to go back to change this to half a millimeter and now it will be okay Now it's okay, as you can see. Now we have a support structure. You click OK and it's done. And I know it looks a little different from uh, what you have in the instructions and it also looks different compared to the example. But uh, this is the way that you can do it yourself quite easily. And the printing will happen from this side so this is where you attach to the printing platform it prints downwards and after you printed you cut off the supports you tear them off you will see that in the video about the printing lab 
So now we save and we export in um, STL and STP. STL is uh, the stereolithographical format that is used by uh, 3D printers. You can put it into a slicer program and uh, create uh, a G-code file for filament-based printing and create uh, the job files for resin printers which have the, the layers that will be projected onto the printer surface. So name is for instance this one and you need to select the format STP first. STP is a is a standard uh, engineering exchange format. Um, it contains the 3D uh, CAD data of, of your model. So in case we run into any problem, then, um, then this can be used. And this is also a, a good way to exchange uh, 3D CAD files between uh, different people. So if you design something, then export it in STP, then you won't have any version issues or any other access problems between importing to another software. STP is handled the same way by AutoCAD or uh, Autodesk and uh, Autodesk Inventor and uh, SolidWorks. So it's, um, it's a good way to proceed. And you also need to export in STL, but one thing to take care of is um, first of all you need to make sure that you have the correct dimensions i have millimeters in units you need to make sure you also have millimeters and the resolution should be high by default uh, it goes with prep which is a pretty low uh, resolution and it uh, makes a rough approximation of all the rounded corners which will not really be good for 3d printing so save and you can do a sanity check by going to what you have and uh, opening it in the 3D viewer in uh, Windows. And then you can look closer. Are all the curvatures correct? And so on. And that is it for this lab. Now, um, if you would like to, um, you can look at how it is converted into a sliced file and you can continue with the experimental lab. Mm -hmm.